Hello everyone. So today we'll be looking at Git and GitHub. Okay. So this will be my first introductory video on Git. So Git is a free and open source versions control system. So what do we mean by version um, version control system? Version control system is the management of changes to documents or computer programs or large websites. So it's whereby we can make changes and have some kind of multiple programmers utilizing the same resource or working hand in hand to achieve a common goal. For example, maybe working on a project. So everyone is contributing, making changes to the website, updating the files of the codes and likes and the likes and tracking the progress of the site. So it's a way of also keeping track on how the project is faring and also there's a time stamp and the likes. So that's what version controls means. So Git itself is a version control system. Okay. So Git up is more like a site. Okay. Why Git is like the system that governs the affairs of the site in a way internally. Okay. So the GitHub is a website that is hosted for online public repository. Why Git is just like a version control system which has its own commands in a way. Okay, which we are still going to look at. We are, going to, we are still going to look at that later. So, like you've learned in the previous lectures on Linux, that directory is the same thing as folder. Okay, and in GitHub, there's something called a repository. So repository in GitHub just means something like a project. So like the name of your project. Okay. Mind you, that repository can have sub projects under it. That means it can have different directories under it. Okay. Why its parent directory that is the major key directory is the repository directory. Okay. Which contains the major headline, just like a write up now whereby you have an heading, then you have sub heading. So that major heading is like the focus, which is the repository. Okay, so the title or the goal of your project, why anything below it can be under is like the directory. All right, so anytime you are seeing the word repository, just put it to your mind that is where your project folder is. All right, so like I said, Git up is a site to host those repository online. All right, now there's something called parts as a personal access token. So we'll soon look at how to get your personal access token because it will be very relevant when it comes to doing stuff like git push, which we are still going to look at it later when you want to push your files or your work locally to the sites, the GitHub sites. So the personal access token is a substitute for password. Okay, so you'll be requested to put in a password. So instead of putting it your putting in your GitHub password, it is this personal access token you are going to replace it with. All right. So there's something also called the commits in GitHub. So commits is just like saving. Okay, saving something. Just that is as so it's not just about saving only. It's just like a snapshot of something, a particular point in time, like a timeline frame. All right, every little changes you make, every little tiny thing, it pinpoints those things and it saves those changes. In short, the advantage of GitHub is that, for example, now when you are making changes to your documents, let's say, for example, you have an index.html file and you are upgrading the site, you are upgrading that particular file. So sometimes you may choose to delete something and put a new stuff. Then maybe tomorrow you are like, I think I need that stuff I deleted. So you can still choose to go back to find that stuff you deleted and you will still get the same output back. So it's, it's if you store all those time frames, all those things you've been doing, even the one you, you thought may not be relevant, maybe tomorrow you may think it is really um, relevant. You can go back to find where it is and fix it back in your new updated code. So that's how flexible GitHub can be. All right. And every GitHub repository always have a readme file. Okay, there is this readme.md file. It's just used to write a description about the project. All right. So it's just used to write a description about the project, about what the project is all about, and just for 
other programmers to understand what the project is about. So that's it about that. So for now, I would like us to play around to get some familiarity with the GitHub website itself. So I'm in my GitHub profile now. So you can choose to follow me. Just search for Lexis code up here. Type Lexis code. You should see me there. All right. So just search for Lexis code. You see me there. You can follow me on GitHub. So this is my um best. This is my profile page. So I would like us to go to the dashboard. So I'm clicking this logo here. So this is the dashboard here. Then you can click on new. That's like saying creating a repository. So if you want to create a repository, you can first click on this logo to go to the dashboard, then click on new repository. All right. Or you can come to this other part. You can see the other options here. All right. So you can see your profile, which was the place I was before. Why right. this is the repository. If I click on that, this is the my repository is here also so you can also click on this part of this new to create a new repository all right so now we are going to create a new repository to just play around with this site to understand how to navigate the site first before we then move to doing some other extra things concerning github in terms of using our terminal all right so let me click new so I want to create a new repository. So the first thing you do is you have to give your repository a name. So let me just give it a random name since we are testing it. So I'll just name my repository test repo. Okay. So I just chose to name it test repo. Description is optional. Okay. Let me just put a description, something like this is my first kids up tutorial all right so the next part an option of private or public um so most times you will likely use the public um feature than the private private means you are the only one that's going to assess it okay so public means you need to allow others you want to allow others to be able to assess your files all right so most likely you are going to leave it as public then scrolling down okay then you can choose to add a readme file by clicking on this remember you will always need a readme file all right so you just click on add a readme file or even if you choose not to click on it you can still create the readme file later inside your repository all right so for now let me just for simplicity's sake i will click on this so it's automatically created for me and that sets my branch for me so i'm in the main branch so the main branch is the default branch in github all right it used to be called master before then it's later upgraded to main because so uh, there are some controversies with the word master you know, master is more like a guy stuff and you know ladies can't <laughs> ladies it doesn't really feel about this in a way you know ladies are called mistress young men are called master so i feel they needed to just change the name to something natural okay which is main the main branch so if i click on create repository so this is how it looks like so i've created my first project like this which i named test repo all right and this is the readme file here and this is the contents of the readme file so the description i wrote was what they wrote inside here all right so this major part is just the heading of my report the name why this is the description i wrote the other time so i can choose to also make changes to it so by clicking this um pencil here so if i click on this pencil here so you can see so i can just choose to write any random thing like this is for practice sake all right so then I need to add, once I'm done with whatever I'm doing here, I can then scroll down and commit my changes. All right. So you can choose to put a description. I made an update to this file. So description sometimes is good just for explanatory purpose, whereby if someone else wants to assess your file now and wants to understand what happened in the updates, so you will let the person know what you actually did there. All right. So I'll click on commit changes. 
can see this is the new look of how it is here all right so that is just how to play around and if you click on this history if i click on my history now you can see the history so that is thing about committing committing is in time frame you can see this was two minutes ago when i created the readme fire the repo why now i just made the changes 14 seconds ago all right which means that i can choose to assess what i had before i can choose to assess what i had before whereby if i click on this initial comments now you can see this was what i have before the test repo and this is my first github tutorial that was what that was the first thing we saw right so now if i choose to maybe go back and i can see the updated one if i click on this you can see this is the updated one you can see the plus sign which means i just added this other line to it all right now let me do one more update in this readme so you'll see something let me just let me go back to the readme here click on the pen now i want to erase something let me erase mm, this is for practice okay let me remake let me just erase the sake now let me save commit my changes mm, let me i just want to ignore description for now so commit changes you can see the sake is not there now let me go let me check my history so i should have three histories now so the commit and i just committed it now now so that's why i said committed now at this point in time so the other one was two minutes ago now i want you to notice a difference here that this is my latest commit which i just did now so if i click on this now you will notice something here you see this red color and you see this green color so what this is trying to tell you you can see there's a negative sign here also in this line theory look at the negative sign close to this this so this negative sign and this red color means i deleted something here so this was the old text i wrote this whole part was the old text why this is the latest text of the changes i made remember when i was talking about this github from the start i said you can go back to assess stuff you might have deleted or changes you might have made that you later felt was relevant all right so that is the advantage of having a github access all right so that you can easily go back to assess some stuff that you may need or you thoughts you may not need which at the end you end up needing <laughs> all right so that's just part of its advantages okay so let me go back let me go to my test repo i'll click on that again then i can choose to create more files we are still in the readme file so let me just choose to create some random files for now okay let me name this one index.html Oh, sorry wait let me go back here i think i should click here yeah, add file rather i went to click go to file whereas i didn't have that file so i have to first create the file so i click on add file create new file so i can choose to create a new file in this html then you can put your html documents here so if you want to type your HTML stuff, you can do all that here and the likes. Just play around, play around, play around with it. Okay. Or paste, copy and paste your code from your code editor. But well, that's not really a good practice because I'll still I'll still teach you how to push your code directly without needing to copy and paste here. Okay. So this is just I'm just showing you how to play around with the interface of the GitHub site for now. So you can put your description stuff um let me just say a oh sorry all right so let me just say a new html file all right so i'll click commit to my ch commit to changes you can see now we have two files under this all right so we have two files we have the index.html and we have our readme file so you can create multiple files under your repository that's your project files so that's just what these are all what um github interface looks like so you can choose to delete let's say you want to delete your file you want to delete this whole repository so you to do that just go to your settings so this tab is actually long okay so you surely see a settings part in among this tab so the reason it is like this because i didn't 
I choose not to widen my screen size. All right, so you can see, it. click on the settings. Then you can scroll down. You see, delete this repository. So to delete that, to tell you that, you, just for you to be sure, type exactly what is here, just to confirm. So you can just copy and paste or type it. So click, I understand the consequence, delete this repository then to be deleted, but I chose not to delete it. Okay, because I want to use what we did here. I want to use it for the other tutorial we're going to do. So lastly, I would like to talk about the personal access token, how to access it. So for us to get, for you to get your personal access token, you click on this part, go to your settings. Okay, from your settings, scroll down. You should see developer settings. So click on developer settings, then click on personal access tokens. So I already have one already. So I see in your, if you don't have any, you just click on generate a new token. All right, so you give it to your token a name, whatever name you want to give it. Then you give it an expiration time frame that you choose, or if you don't want it to be expired, so whatever. So you just give it an expiration date. I think my last one that I did, I gave it three months. So just click this first option. For now, you I don't think you need any of this. Just this first option is enough to do whatever you want to do generally based on GitHub. Okay, so just click on this first repo option. Then scroll down, then click generate token. Then you'll get a token, kind of like a password, right? So save that password, it's a personal password. Don't let anyone get to see the password. Okay, so that's what you'll be using for your password whenever you want to get push. So we'll talk about get push later on. You understand what that stuff means, all right? So let me just say one more. So I'm back in my repository. If I can see this is what's what we created and I made it public. That's why we're seeing it public like this. If it's private, to be labeled private, which means it's only me that will see it. All right, so let me click on the repository again. Then lastly, there's a feature here called clone. So this HTTPS requires the password, which we're going to use the path for the path that's the pass personal access token. So later, the next video, we'll learn how to clone, how to push, how to pull, all the stuff like that. So for now, I believe this is, it. you have explained the major things you need to know concerning this site, the GitHub site itself, all right? So I'll see you in the next lecture. Have a lovely time. Bye.